Paulette is now ready to put on her hoop skirt, or what was popularly called a crinoline. This device is quite unique. It's a series of concentric hoops attached together with tapes. It literally goes over her head and around her waist. This device actually was liberating for women. Prior to this time, women would wear several, if not many, petticoats to create the fashionable silhouette. They would wear six or seven or eight starched horsehair flannel petticoats to give the skirt a full look. The crinoline, which was invented in 1856, alleviated all that heat and weight. So it secures around the waist, creates the fashionable silhouette, but isn't heavy. And in my research of doing this, I came across an interesting fact that the first woman to climb the Matterhorn actually was wearing a hoop skirt. So this garment, although it looks very cumbersome and certainly was, was indeed liberating as well. A woman's legs were free to move and she certainly had more air circulation. Paulette is now getting ready to put on her petticoat. And this too is a very elaborate series of flounces which falls directly over the hoop skirt. It is secured in the back with ties and again I think Paulette can do that on her own. She'll be putting on her, first her skirt. This is a magnificent outfit. I love the color red and the plaid and this was very popular in the 1860s. Again this is secured with hooks and eyes and is fully lined. The hoop skirt was not without its problems. As you can see, it's a very wide thing and it's very difficult to pass a woman in a hallway or to cook dinner when you're so many feet away from the stove. Over 40,000 women alone in England were killed with, when their hoop skirts caught fire. Another example here in Nevada was in Gold Hill. In the 1860s, a woman named Mrs. Bridget Carmen was walking through the mining operations when her hoop skirt actually got in attached and entangled in the millwork operations, and she was actually repeatedly beaten to death. But of course, fashion has its drawbacks, even as it does today. Paulette now has her skirt on and her bodice on as well, and she's putting on her under sleeves. Sleeves were not necessarily a permanent part of the garment, so they could actually be removed, taken off, laundered, and then reapplied. So she is scooching them up underneath her sleeves, and now you can see how elegant it really does look. Our lady is just about completed now. Her dress is elegant. Notice her sleeves, her collar, her brooch. She has a snood on her hair to keep it up out of her way, and she's just about to put on her bonnet. Fashionable headwear was a very important part of a woman's toilet, and this particular style um, allows the hair to be exposed down the back, but it's also tied under the chin. Paulette will be putting on her gloves, and then she is ready for her day. She is fully attired. And so the fashionable figure of the 1860s was achieved, thanks to the use of the correct underpinnings. We'll next head back to the Marjorie Russell Clothing and Textile Research Center in Carson City for a closer examination of the articles of clothing that made it all possible. <laughs>